decided I, I hate those microphones and uh, if I need to use it, I love it. <coughs> <laughs> you have to, if you put your mind in a, in a, in a way that you can decide to do otherwise, you can do whatever. Mm -hmm. Ah, but uh, radical movement or radical coaching, uh, I kind of, uh, this, this uh, topic what we have here is a, is a joke, to be honest. There's nothing radical in the stuff that I'm planning to discuss with you here. And there is not much about coaching as such. But movement theory maybe is a small movement, maybe growing up, but still something is happening. But it irritates people, so that's a good thing. Some people hate the coaching word, and most of the people hate the radical. So I decided that we decided that we want to keep. And we didn't invent anything better either. Uh, this whole thing started actually, <coughs> I think it started for me 39 years ago when I was born, but uh, looking at the context what we are discussing in, in our premises and uh, among my friends and uh, dear fellows, colleagues, is that I think in 5-10 years ago, some of my good friends with whom I have a privilege to work with, we started to look uh, life a little bit differently. Uh, in, for many reasons, but uh, there were very good emotional trainings and uh, maybe we got a little bit older and wiser and uh, you kind of, if you look at life in general, that's a, it's a lot of stages in life and you leave something behind and then you enter a new stage. And I think that happened to many of us during the same time that uh, maybe we grew up, became a little bit more adult and start to think that uh, there is something more and more meaningful in life than only what we are now doing. And that has evolved now during the years. We made uh, great things, not so great things, but uh, still uh, we have a quite close group that with whom we have worked, mainly worked, I would say, more than 10 years. And uh, there is actually something special in that group. There's a lot of leaders there coaches, there's developers, there's a lot of different kind of people. But it's, it, is a, it is something stronger than a family, in my opinion. And it, if it happens that it somehow concentrates on a working place, you have a quite, quite good solid base to create many good things in that. So, coming back, how it started then is that uh, we looked at these transformations, what we are doing and uh, what the industry is doing, and, uh, all of these Kaisers and BDC and whatever you have there and uh, we have we have a growing feeling that uh, we can do something totally different if we want. And uh, we discussed and discussed and uh, went and uh, then I think roughly a year ago that why on earth you wouldn't go with more people, go with them, discuss with them, <coughs> share what we feel, listen to what they are saying and uh, really understanding more and getting this much, much deeper. And uh, that was what we then did. We started to make some little bit material <coughs> that I will come, come back how, how we decided to do the things, but uh, it was mainly me and my boss, the boss of the, I'm coming from Finland, by the way, our boss running the whole site, the R&D, head of 650 people. We together put the first things together, of course, with a lot of group of people, but we took the initiative that let, let's, let us do a session there and get the 10, 12 good people there and start clearly to discuss and understand. And that was the starting point, when you have it in your calendar, then you have to do it. You can discuss many years and uh, go forward, but if you have something that, hey, it's coming, people need goals. That's a, but that's inbuilt in us that you have to have something and that was exactly the same thing for us. So we went there and uh, then we didn't tell anything to anyone what is it all about. We a little bit tweeted around it and uh, people started to ask that, we actually asked that, would you like to be a pilot group? It was a really, because this could have been a total miserable failure and still can be, as anything can be in life and then you learn. But uh, we didn't tell the agenda and, and anything for the people that are you willing to come with us? And uh, 
this was the background draft that we, we discussed in one session. Of course, one session is just a, just a tiny, tiny piece of things that happen, but uh, we start at, uh, it starts from me. So we need to examine our own life, our thinking patterns, how are we fixed in certain things, and how can we get more moving forward. Then, of course, life is about interaction, so it very naturally comes that you have a you need to encounter others. And what kind of things then you encounter in others, that's a really wide topic and it varies a lot. And I hear so, so, so many great things, sad things and happy things that are, it's amazing. But of course, we are not in any way professionals in that, that sense that you have a psychological stuff and we don't want to break anyone apart or we cannot heal anyone if you have a lot of problems in your life maybe you should seek some other help so still tie it into a company context the things that we discuss and uh, leading and coaching others maybe I already now define our view of coaching coaching is good leadership of people serving them and helping them out. Other way around, what is a leader? It's good coaching, serving people and helping them out. Again, servant. So let's try to agree here that that's, that's the angle that we can talk about if I have some questions. Uh, this is not about uh, dogma at all, so although this is an Agile, Lean, Unconference, I will not talk about Agile and Lean and Scrum and Kanban and XP or whatever you have. But uh, the reason is that in this context that uh, you know, we all know, there is this thing called reality. You can examine that somehow, it's very complex, complicated, a lot of interactions and uh, what this Dogmas, or if you call them models, or processes and tools, what they try to do that you have a window towards that one. That you have different kind of windows there, which kind of tries to repress the reality somehow, and you look through the window and try to understand it a little bit more. But one problem with this dogmatist approach, what I have seen is that. There are some people who start to worship these models, dogmas. This becomes the center of their life. Have you, have you ever heard that you are not doing it right? <laughs> Why? Don't, that's, that's impossible. Of course you are doing right if you are doing something. Of course it might be, it's not according to this dogma. But if you compare that to reality, of course it's, it's right. And if you go really, really far, these kind of people sometimes even they forbid the reality, they deny that it, it's, it's there. They just work on this. And believe me, I know something about this one. I've worked in 12 years in Ericsson, and uh, that company is made around the process. I think the 10, 20 percent of the people used to work with these models. This is the state scale that you have, and you need to really do that. So, no dogma. Uh, obstacles. This is not the scientific uh, definition of obstacles, but uh, what I've heard that there are three main obstacles for any kind of change and good things happening. It's the managers, it's the management and it's the leaders. Or manager and management and leaders. Of course, there are other things. So, that part, which, if, if that is the most difficult part, why on earth we are not touching with all of our effort towards that? And try to, and not try to avoid that challenge there, and not try to do something else, because if that is what many, many people say, Let's attack on that. And this is also a background of what I try to tell you here as well. So, 
what is this? Jürgen knows this management 3.0 and what, whatever that the need is there that the people ask. What, what are these? What are these agile managers and these kind of things? So let's try to have a little bit different angle into that. We are dealing with people. It's, it's people business. Unfortunately, it's quite, at least in our domain, it's very cruel business. It's a, I would even call it contact sport, that uh, there's a lot of fierce competition in the business, and that, of course, affects the people. But uh, the answer to that reality again, what we have here, cannot be hard. It must be very, very soft. And uh, how to address an individual, how to address a human being, human being that is, I think, the essence of, of it all. We are many, many different people. We are all different, but we are still humans. And we have actually, we share a lot of common things. The basic needs of uh, people and human are, are actually quite universal. We all want recognition in one way or another, for example. We all want power in one way or another. Uh, one, one way to phrase leader, leadership is also that how you exchange power. How much I'm willing to give power to you, and how much you are willing to give it to me. Agile approach to this is that power to the people, which is, I think, it's quite good to start. But uh, again, coming back to the reality. Why don't we work then on these basic things that are common for all of us? Then we don't need to discuss about testing or coding or managing or whatever you have. Let's discuss the things that we share. So that is the one, one key thing that we, <coughs> we believe is, it is the correct way to build up a relationship with people. By the way, uh, I'm very, very big fan of discussions. I always get feedback in this kind of session that you shouldn't let discussion flow, but I really encourage you to interrupt me, ask questions right away, and, and uh, we can continue afterwards if you are interested. Do you agree on this, people? Is that, that the thing? Someone is not. Uh, then if you look at people, uh, I actually try not to represent you in a really, really small time slot and Overview of the things that we, we have discussed in one kind of session. And I say it starts with me. So, taking care of myself. Uh, you know that we are all, all living in a, in a world that you are influencing others. And in one way or another, everyone is always absorbing energy from you. From some of us more, some of us less, but still, still. It's an in energy exchange business in a way. And uh, how then do you get that energy for you? Of course, you need to exercise. Uh, if I really, really simply think about in these areas, we have discussed around that what kind of exercise you can do. First one is, of course, very easy physical. It's your body, what, what you have and uh, how, how all that affects into your brain and, and all of those things. So there's a lot of, lot of studies that uh, actually the door to your mind is actually your body. So I can personally say that I, I, I don't, I'm not yet in a perfect shape at all, but I was in a really, really lousy shape, let's say two, two years ago. Traveling a lot eating junk food, having beer, sleep, not sleeping that well, not exercising enough, and uh, we together decided that <coughs> this task can cannot go on. So, hey, we are 30, 40 or something, and we are already getting really, really tired. So we together help each other out and try to exercise. And we exercise in our own terms. You can go out with the dog and someone wants to run a marathon or whatever. It helps us. Uh, another form of exercising is, of course, intellectual one. 
silence yourself, uh, read a good book, have, have a thinking, what, what was the essence of that one? Look, look around the world, what is happening? Culture is a good thing. I, I mean, this kind of social culture or real, what is. For me, it's really in, interesting. I'm really interested in history, and I, I like if I just, just, I can find time, but not enough for that one. But it really, really puts my brain at, well, how, how, well, how what happened in Rome in 2000 years ago, and these kind of things like that. It really, pretty much gives me energy to work on that one. Third one, of course, is then that building up your emotional energy. How you how you feel? What kind of things you have? Are you really angry? How emotionally? You can you can you can work on that quite well. And putting yourself into that, if you have these constructive feelings and things that your Emotions don't take over you. I think I think you all have been in a situation that um, if someone is really really angry, you don't want to interrupt that person because it doesn't it just makes things worse. And uh, then afterwards, when she, he or she comes down, then you go, go again go back and you can go and you can practice these kind of things. You can really do it in a conscious way. Uh, I can say one story about myself again that. Uh, a married man and uh, like married people, they sometimes have fights. You know, you argue with your wife, or you don't, you don't wash your socks, or whatever you have there. And we we used to have a, we of course are still. I don't, I'm not <laughs> perfect in any way, but I decided that uh, I I will not go go into that anymore because it doesn't construct anything. Yeah, it's much better to listen and try to sympathize. <coughs> it's hard, but still emotionally, it's very very rewarding. So that's uh, one way for me for doing it. Then, social. I'm really afraid of different kind of, you know, us things. Us things that we are treated like we are, we are not very good on social situations. That if you have a whatever, you go in the back of the room, and only when the beer starts to flow, and then we come, come in the picture. That's true. And that's a deep built in us. But uh, challenging yourself social, like a whatever, asking a question. I, I, I want to be the stupid one who asks this question. Uh, or when, I, when you go to a cafeteria that you, uh, I go to that, that table that there is no, no people. I exercise myself that I meet new people and uh, listen to what they have to say and uh, really doing it consciously. That's one way. And then comes, of course, there's, you can argue that there is, but it's very simple, it's this spiritual energy or that you actually believe that things are, in the end of the day, quite something good will happen. And of course, it's, that, that is, I think, maybe the, at least for me, the most difficult part is that uh, spiritually, looking at what is happening in the world and uh, how much we are doing bad stuff for our, our earth and these kind of things, they can make you really, really, really feel not good. And, but if you believe that uh, good things happen, good people, and in the, we all, all are born with good people, so a lot of, lot of good on that. And stress comes into the picture. So how to handle, handle the stress? Uh, that is uh, really important that you, if you only exercise in one area, really, really, this, this should be somehow in balance. But I've learned at least that uh, if you just put your effort in the intellectual ranking and don't do anything here, then you might be doing it too much. But I have a friend who used to, he was, he was planning to be an athlete and he was exercising his physical power really, really much. And now afterwards discussing that uh, it's not, it was not serving the purpose that he wanted to have more. And that uh, it went, went too far, way too far. So challenging yourself. Creating energy also, and uh, uh, then we notice that sometimes we creating sources of energy around you and uh, and uh, carrying on. We all know these kind of people all around us that give energy, but of course they also sometimes need to receive it somehow, and uh, that is one part of the human interaction. Okay, I will a little bit uh, tell you about this how we decided to do this. 
first 48 hours. Uh, I said that we took a snapshot of the real life, tried to have a, enough men and women, old, young, testers, developers, managers, all, all kind of going this kind of, this is not a real pixel, but intimate area and uh, go out there for three days. And uh, no slides. Music is very important part of what we have used there. And then we give uh, people this kind of books. We write a lot of lot of stuff also on the lifts, but uh, any given empty book, nothing is. Okay. But start writing it down. Then you can do it. I have done this many years. A lot of stuff here. Then if you are, are with a group, then you can of course, hey, I wrote this and this makes me think like this and this and this. And then you can go back. What does it really mean? Good stuff. I really like to write with your hands. It is important. But that's it basically, that's it. Of course, it's, it's outside. I have one picture based on yesterday's demand that there is only snow in Finland. <laughs> some nice places as well, but we try to look at really beautiful places that uh, puts your mind in a totally new zone and it's quiet and in Finland you can find these kind of places, but I, I have been doing Hungary as well, there is also, I'm going to do this, uh, this is an actually funny story, I had some colleagues from Dallas and they asked me to co-host a session there for native English speaking people, that will be a challenge, but uh, it's, it's going to be fun. But you go there, you discuss with the people and uh, then you do it, you start to open up. And the magic here is, the biggest magic, what I've heard from everyone is that it's either me or the highest boss there discuss. Not the consultant, not someone outside. Among us, telling with his own words what he thinks about life, what he thinks about business and listening to others, sharing, caring, and creating a really, really good connection. And when you have done this, this 48 hours, it's a quite good time, time slot for start, start new things. Then it's in a total different level when you discuss in the corridors, meet people. And uh, it is something that I have never seen in my life, in working life before, how, how it really resonates with but the key is that there are, you have the faces for the leaders, the coaches, the people who, who have these opinion leaders and this kind of thing that you have in the organization. And of course, one part of this is that this is not suitable for everyone. You need to be mature enough to be able to take this kind of thing. So, trick or treat, picture from Kekkola Manson. <coughs> whole mansion for us. This is not very expensive, to be honest. If you look at it from company perspective. If you send someone to an outside course, you pay some thousands of euros. Here yeah, you only pay for this. Of course, time, if you take it money, but it's actually very, very... This is an investment. No one has said that this costs something. So, in your organization, I really encourage to do it on your own. Yes. Oh, they are also Okay, then I, I will a little bit go through now some, some things what we have. We are going there to just get you a little bit inside. What, what Sorry for that. <laughs> uh, we have doing, doing it. So if you start, start to look at yourself when you're born, we are all born as a creative people. And uh, if you look at children around you, that what kind of things there are. We all want to play out and that. Uh, decorate things and uh, nothing nothing is impossible and uh, and uh, you can you can do miracles and we all, all kind of little bit have something something that also missing that you know. what happens when we go to we go to school and universities and then we go to work and then we go to those meeting rooms and that ha kind of disappears totally so what happens to us why do we lose this creativity 
So this is a very simple way, not any scientific, but you can think about it also like this. That there's two sides in your head. This is a person, I'm real often. Bro, I'm afraid. <laughs> and this is a brain. I'm, I'm not going to end the left or right, left or right side because that's true to be. I at least I'm. But uh, let's call that you have a, when you're born, you're born, we call it little creator. Uh, we have actually stolen this little creator from a lady called Julie Cameron. She's an artist, makes art in, in, with her hands and very creative and uh, she has written books about it and uh, what this little creator can, can do for you. And then she also has in those books uh, ways of waking this little creator inside of you. One thing that I tried out because I, I always try to want to practice what I preach is that in every morning if you start to take a empty paper and just to keep your brain down there. So whatever comes to your head, write it down and do it all the time. I think it, for me it worked pretty well. I was, I was, I usually wake up nowadays six o'clock or something like that and uh, then I, I, I don't do it actually anymore. But when I did it, it I felt different. But then I took, make a mis made a mistake and I looked what I have written. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so it, because it, when you really let, let it loose and go, then, then it's, it's kind of a, you can write really weird stuff. But the, the idea is that you open up, just let it flow there. But then the other part here, yeah, what we can go is the, we call it inspector. So you almost go there and then it comes out. Oh, Something it's, it's, it's not appropriate. Or I have this comment, but I don't do it. So it kind of also bounces back on your head all the time. Actually, the thing is that uh, these two sides, if you look at like this very simplistically, they fight all the time. And then this inspector actually tries to kill this creative part of the job. So my message here is that if you observe yourself, you will notice that this happens and you can, when it tries to come, push it back. It's, it's just a thinking background. So that's how it goes. There's a other stuff also that we discuss around, like here's a inner, inner body, we can go it, or even lower and how those two are connected. And, uh, but I, I, I don't have time to go through with that. Really, really interesting stuff. And uh, when you then start to think, think about it, that what is the basis for it? It's safety. Uh, without safety, there is nothing. And uh, people are really, they can do whatever you know, to create the feeling of safety. And that that's maybe the most violent part that you can do in life, that you break someone's safe. And if that happens, it's a very, very serious situation. Uh, and uh, those things that can harm relationships, they are, they are sometimes you can even heal them. Of course, you can work on that. Safety is, is the basis for everything. It's, it's the basis for safety or trust, of course, is the other word here. Yeah that comes there, but uh, I cannot be trustworthy if I don't feel safe. That is the thing that you have inside. So we discussed quite, quite, quite a bit time, with, long time with about this safety and uh, part of this seed that you go with the small group is actually to create a safe environment. Because you are there when you start to go and you notice that people are very open. We make an agreement that uh, all that we discuss here stays there, and that has never been violated. So it, it, is, it means that uh, people are, some people more, some people less, we don't force anyone to do, no one needs to share your horror stories about your life if you don't want to do it. But some people want to do it, it helps them, and it helps others as well. For me, being the lucky guy, 
being able to see all the sessions and discussion, uh, it helps me a lot because I, I think I'm the most privileged people <laughs> because I can I can be with so many people and I hope that I don't I can step back and when we continue these kind of things that there's a lot of other people as well. But everything is built on safety. Uh, love comes on top of safety. Uh, we discussed, for example, that is there such a thing that unconditional love? You start with the true love. And then, of course, mother, child, you might have their things. <coughs> but then, love and caring, if you tweak it around a little bit, building on safety, you tweak in the working life. What is caring for others? Are you mainly interested in yourself or for the others? And uh, this is a uh, this is the thing where you can make this true difference between, uh, let's say, organizations or companies that you have the love there in the daily life. But some other places I see that they just do whatever and they go home. Life is somewhere else. Then, enthusiasm, how to create a movement. Uh, I, know, I know you, some of the goals of John Wooden, right? The guy, guy who, the only guy in the world who has won NBA or the, what was the previous version as a player and 14 times as a coach. And he has this kind of, a, it's actually nowadays a, management framework or something like this, but we made a <laughs> really simplified version out of that. Pyramid of success consists of three parts. First thing, love for the game. Whatever you are doing, you need to have your heart. Uh, I, I observe this in my own life very closely. Uh, I have a three and six year old kids and the older one, he just loves football. He can do whatever, but he, <coughs> of course, you know, children, they turn their interest like this. But this has stayed now two years already. And uh, this thing that he is willing to do for that, for the love of the game is actually leading to the next one the work. So if you have the love for the game and you do, I can call it 10,000 dollars, that doesn't matter. But uh, if you are willing to do a lot of work with good policy, you can become really something. And this is a pattern that if you look around in the world that usually at least there. Of course you need to have a, a little bit, and this is my personal thing, if, you, if I would decide that I would love over city and I would practice it now 20 years, I maybe I would still wouldn't be very good. But uh, might be, I'm a, I play guitar as well, that if that would be really the love that I have and decide to do it and have these hearts there and practice a lot, get good trainings, I would become pretty good in that, I suppose. But then how you use those skills is the essence. So this is coming back to the learning, or going to the learning, learning area. Situational speed, how you use those things that you practice and how you do. In work life, of course, you can do a lot of things practicing, but then the real life is that thing that you need to have there. How do you use your skills in real life situations, in business situations, in different kind of things? So, if you are interested, Google it. The actual pyramid is it's kind of 15 pieces of processes and stuff, but I think this is the essence behind it. But at least that's I want to, how I want to believe it. So how to create a movement? Then you need to have people. When you share the same love and do and then you operate here. Someone needs to start it, but the followers are the important. 
And this, this applies to this whole this radical thing as well that uh, suddenly, suddenly at some point of time it becomes a movement. Now I think if I call it that we are 80, 80 people, something like this. Might turn out to be 300 or not. I don't care. Well it goes down. It's good for us. Anyway. So that's a movement for us. How to do it. Miracles. <laughs> This is actually an interesting, interesting thing that we have discussed a lot. There are some people who, who have, a, for example, a Catholic religious background, and when you put this word there, it means something. Their brain says that miracles are something that is connected to that, what they have used, used, used in their past. But if I define it like this, that how we want to use this, people have we seen miracles around in our corridors. That it's a, sudden positive uh, movements towards something better. Sudden positive uh, change towards something better. That's a miracle. It can be a small thing, big, big thing. And uh, the thing that if you define it like this, that uh, it actually invites cooperation. It invites people to go there, discuss, do things together. Let's work on these miracles together. And of course, the sudden thing is the thing there. When you work, you do, good things start to happen. So that's the how, how we have this last. I would say that this, where I now, has usually taken in the discussion 15 hours. So I'm really fast forwarding here. Just to give you a little bit of insight how it will be asked. Then uh, moving away from this individual person is the encountering the other person. Let's see if I have time. I show you one thing I hope it works. I think that I have to practice. I, I want to show you something that uh, I say that uh, change your in a heartbeat, almost in a heartbeat, that's true. But uh, you know this lady, uh, she's called Marina Abramovic. She's an artist in, in her 50s or something. And uh, she uh, traveled around Europe in the 70s quite, quite a bit. She actually comes from Croatia, but I think it was in Spain that she was. And uh, she found a companion or a partner there called Ulay, I think was his name. And in the 70s, they were the last remains of this hippie movement, and they had this kind of what you call lorry or whatever house that you move around and then you play around and make, make some good, good stuff there. And they actually said quite, <coughs> quite an amazing love story there. Uh, but this Ulay guy. He was, uh, let's say, a little bit on the wild side. That uh, he also loved some other people quite much than Marina. So that created a really tense relationship for them. And being an artist, on on and off and on and off. But uh, finally, they decided that uh, they decided that uh, we need to stop this one. It doesn't work. But then, being an artist, uh, of course, means that you need to do it with the style. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> In the 70s, uh, they decided to do it like this, that uh, in the 70s it's really hard to get into, was, was really hard to get into China and get permission to do things there. But they wanted to do it like this, that they applied for a permission that they go in the other ends of the Great Wall, then they start to walk there, make art around it, and then they finally encounter somewhere in the middle, they embrace, kiss, and go forever. And that's actually what happened. Then their life, of course, continued. And uh, this lady, this picture is from MoMA 2010. I, I guess some of you have seen this. this. But it, for those who hasn't, I don't want to ruin anything from you. But what I try to indicate here is that, uh, OK, I don't know anymore. But he had a show in the MoMA I think it was in Barcelona that a minute with the stretch. She sat there and then came a new person and they just took each other and then 
the next one came. And then the next one came. And she sat there many days and they didn't say anything, they just looked at stared each other eyes there. And they of course filmed there. And there's a three minute video I would like to share with you about what happened. companies 
things are, are looking at. How could he use this social media or our ethics? And then you have a lot of companies and things. And I think that's actually the wrong question. The social part is the essence that what is the social network? It's something that people build together for need. And we have now seen that when you have people who share a bit similar view of the world, there are needs to discuss, then they want to find some tools for that. Because there are people coming from different parts of the world and uh, it's not always easy to organize face to face. And then you can use this modern technology for, the, for that. I now see finally, this has been one of my wet dreams that I could show how these social networks actually really could start to work in, in, a, in a large scale. When you have boundaries there, when you have silos there, where you have a budget there, where you have whatever. And I'm hoping that uh, in one or two years I could share a lot more about how it actually has evolved, if it has. If it just stays here and dies, then there was no need to. So just keeping it for the sake of a social network is meaningless. But if people see value in that, as we know, developer companies, whatever, there is the heart there, there is, there's needs there, then, it, then you see it happen. And this is the thing that I have not seen any manager understand to my mind. Okay, two exceptions. They first start, start that, hey, what kind of tool we should use, and then, then we should enforce this. You cannot enforce this. And the only way to make them understand is to change their surroundings that they start to understand it and live there on, on their own. So let's see what happens on that. It will be a really, really interesting. One side part of this whole, whole thing, but I can share a little bit more what is what is really happening there in the evening on summer Yeah, we are talking about culture. Uh, culture is a. We all always say that. Uh, okay, I can I can put it a new version of culture. Culture is scrum for breakfast. Then it takes kanban for dinner, and then feast with agile and lean in, in the dinner part. So, the thing is that these things that affect how we really have the culture. I think it's hung 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 here. I think you are in the back. You said it really well some time ago that the real culture is not on the posters on the wall. It's kind of what the people discuss in the coffee machines and what they are, what they are really thinking, how they see the world, what kind of values they have, and what is important for them and how they do. I think you also said that uh, you also always sneak and want to hear what is really happening. And that this is exactly the thing. And the uh, only way to change culture is to, is to leave the culture. There's no other way. And of course, culture changes, changes on its own. But strategy cannot enforce culture into the company. It, it doesn't have it, it doesn't happen anyway. But if you have good people doing good things, sharing, sharing great stuff, maybe the culture is changing towards, towards something good if you want to use this. So there is a breakfast. Happiness. Joy. I think uh, when you have these kind of things present all the time, the joy comes there. Joy of work, joy enjoying your life, you feel better, you have good constructive, uh, constructive relations with people, you have a good quality in your life. So the happiness is not the goal as such, as I see it. It's just an outcome of good things that you have. And, uh, I'm an idealistic in a way that I still believe that in these corporations also there can be happiness, but it requires totally different approach what we have seen now. It requires so much different things. That might be that it you never see happiness in some some places. Maybe they should then die. Good people. Good people. Change in this perspective. I would put it like this, that uh, <coughs> change, change means for me, if I put it very simplistically, that I am somewhere now here, there, has, there is the past and 
then there is the future. I need to be, I cannot leave, I cannot leave the future, nor I cannot change the past. I can have something that is waiting for me there, but the things that I do now are the only ones that what's important. And the past is actually the biggest nominator for the change. How do you see your past? Have you been in a prison or in a school? If you see your past as a school, then it opens up a lot of new things. We all suffer in our lives, we all suffer, we learn, we get stuff. But if you think, okay, this was meant for me to happen, I, I need to learn something out of this, then it becomes very, becomes very good. But if you go back and say, oh, why this thing happened? Why, why our business died? Why, 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 why? Take it as a prison and you don't let it go. It happened. Let it go. It's there. It serves me as a library or something. Then you can much, much easier change towards the future and do things now. Not tomorrow, but then do now. Simple way of putting change programs in place. Learn from your past and start to things. Very simple. Learning. Uh, I'm a, I think I'm also idealistic here that I think I, I, I believe that everyone wants to learn, but I also prove another one. So, like uh, we have a discussion in Finland nowadays, or actually now it ended, that there needs to be now a law that everyone has two days of course history. And I was amazed that why, why on earth we are discussing this? But then I started, of course, to look at it a little bit that, of course, there are still places, even in Finland, that people are not allowed to learn by their employer, employers. And uh, I think this is also a false, false thinking of life, but also there are people who don't understand that the only way, only way to go forward is to learn. And uh, for me, that's kind of, if I would be in a place that someone forbids me, I've never actually been in that kind of but I've heard that there is, like there is that I wouldn't, couldn't be able to learn new things. I would be really fast following somewhere else. <laughs> so I had a, I, I said that we have, we try to get these sessions that we have now, more about that in seven or eight. We try to get these demographics in place that there is also women, and of course in the in our industry it's sometimes that you have a little bit more tendency on the male side than on the women's side. And then we ran up, I would say, we ran out of uh, Finnish women, so we started to invite women from Sweden <laughs> to our sessions, which is a great thing, of course, just sharing the view because we are a Swedish company anyway. But uh, then one lady, see, we have now, let's say that we have discussed 20 hours or something and really deep, deep in, in that this, and then we came to this lady. And then she asked that, what does this have to do with this thing? I didn't understand that question. This is the essence of the whole whole human being that you learn. You are learning you. And then someone asked, was that, was that the question based on that, that this learning is these courses and this kind of thing? That's not learning at all. And uh, I, we still don't get it that why, why she asked it. But we did something wrong. I need to discuss it. But back to this, learning is the, is the key to go forward. Okay, surely I think I'm running out of time. Leadership, that's, that's something that all of us has, we do. These all things that we are doing, it's not connected to your position or whatever. Everyone is, is in his or her own life. And then you have people surrounding you. Someone leads you, you lead someone, you go there, and you willingly do things. So, we don't, in, in this, this context, we don't talk anymore at all about this management. That's something different. That's just human interactions, and people seek for leaders. I seek for leaders, everyone seeks for leaders. That's also that happens in every situation. And that's not true. Coaching, a buzzword, of course, uh, but I want to keep it up here 
uh, at least for, for one reason. I, I refuse to take it down as long as there are surrounding me some people who don't understand it at all that what is helping others out. And if someone asks, that when, when are you done with your transformation and coaching? When, as long as I see that, I try to kind of have at least this there, because then we can discuss what is it that makes you help other people. What is that you see from others that helps you? And if someone is ex especially good in some skills, why on earth we wouldn't learn from him or her? There's always someone brighter who has thought of these things. Why, why would we want to go into the hard way? If there is an easier way to do it, someone has put effort and knows the things, by all means use it, always. That is the reason I want to keep the course on here. This is a picture then of our sessions some of my co-teachers co there. I think this man is a hero. To be honest, he has courage to do these kind of things and show it to other leaders. That you can do it as well. Without that one, this wouldn't fly. The R&D head from our side. He is, I think, in my eyes, a hero. Then some comments from the guys tweeting around makes me speechless. Okay. This is this is our our one of way of putting what we are sharing that uh, grant us the wisdom to discover the right, the will to choose it and the straight strength to stay. Thank you. If this is something that's already natural to you, then fine, no problem. 